unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Hebrews chapter 4. Let's begin from verse 12. The Bible says, for the word of God that's or the word that God speaks, or the word of God, yeah? the Bible says, is quick and powerful. Somebody say, it's quick and powerful. Yes, the word God speaks is quick and it is powerful. And the Bible says, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a design of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And the Bible says in the next verse, neither is there anything or any creature that is not manifest in his sight, right? But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And the next verse says, now seeing then, from us understanding the, 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 the power of the word, the sharpness of this two-edged sword, how it cuts asunder, the bone and marrow, and the design of the hearts of men. So he says, seeing then, seeing then, that we have a high priest, a great high priest, the Bible says, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. He says, let us hold fast our profession. Tell your neighbor, let us hold fast our profession. Yeah, fast our profession. Seeing that we have this great high priest, Jesus, that has passed into the heaven, even Jesus as the Son of God. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Now, if you read it from the Amplified Version, the 14th verse says that, and I want to help those who might have a problem with, with, with the semantics. He says, in as so much as then we have a great high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, Son of God, he says, let us hold fast our confession of faith in him. The word the profession in the KJV, the word in Amplified is confession. The Greek word there is krateo. And I'll explain what krateo means. Now, of course, if you're a reader of the word and if you've been probably under a teacher of the word, you will always, for some reason, constantly hear certain scriptures before your eyes. Praise the Lord. And some hardly before others. Some scriptures are quoted more than other scriptures are quoted. They mean that they're of less importance. Sometimes it's the revelation in the dispensation under which we live. Right? For example, if you lived in the dispensation of Moses. Right? The covenant of the old. The wise things and practices that are truth then, but are not applicable now, or if they are to be applied, they, they will be applied in another understanding and revelation. Because of the transitioning from the old covenant into the new. For example, in Moses' time, all through before, in fact, from Abraham, the Bible tells us there was a circumcision of every male. Praise the Lord. Now, we do not teach the circumcision of the flesh in the New Testament dispensation. We preach the circumcision which is of the heart. Hallelujah. Because the old covenant was... More of what was outside, the new covenant is more of the dealing of God with what is in, within you, the inside. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. God is now looking so much on the inside. Why? Because now the Holy Spirit dwells in you. The, all, the Holy Spirit, he, he has an indwelling presence. They're not just visitations. No. What you call visitations, they're supposed to be called experiences. God no longer visits the new creature. God dwells in the new creature. He gives the new creature experiences. And some people, because they're held in the Old Testament dispensation, they think that God's experiences are visitations. Oh, one time I was in my room and Jesus visited me. You understand? Because they believe he just 
visits or he just passes by pass me not a gentle say yeah don't pass me don't pass me you understand he, he he's 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 not you, you understand he's he's moving he's up and down he comes in that room then he goes away then he visits another sister then goes away then they cry for him to come and visit hey, 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 hey. news flash this is the mystery that was hid from the ages past and now is revealed christ in you the hope of glory christ in you the hope of glory in you the hope of glory so yes we do still have experiences but the indwelling life of the spirit of god his person in jesus is constantly permanent in you and i hallelujah when i was growing up they used to have guys who used to scare us they said if you do this jesus will leave you i think i know what they meant but they said it the wrong way Maybe they were meaning that you'll affect how the anointing of God works on your life. Do you understand? But many of us say, if you do this, Jesus will leave you. And if he leaves you, you're good. He will put his hands off you. You understand what I'm saying? He says, I will never leave you. Hey, tell your neighbor, he says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I will never leave you. The Bible says he abideth with you permanently. Permanently. I will never have, will ne- have never then from then understood. I, since I understood, I have never worried that Jesus would leave me. Uh-uh. He is with me, in me, for me, through me, forever with me. Somebody shout hallelujah. What a blessing. What a blessing. You see, I have had several experiences in life. Of the spirit. And. But I've not met them the standard of my ministry. And I have only quoted only but a few. For the benefit of those things that. Will bring faith to the hearts of my hearers. But not to exalt me above measure. You understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes as a minister of Christ. You need the balance. Of both what God is putting upon you versus the wisdom to reconcile that expected maturity in you, not to exalt yourself beyond measure. I don't need Satan to be buffet me with a thorn in the flesh to learn. You understand what I'm saying? Our man Paul says, and to keep me from, from boasting beyond measure, for, to keep me from, from, from exalting myself beyond measure because of the abundance of revelation. He sent forth a messenger to buffet me. And that kind of prayer, he's three times is asking God, take this away, take this away. And God tells, he's telling Paul, the issue is not this thing in you. The issue is, the, is how the wisdom to reconcile what I show you and reveal to you versus the maturity to carry the balance that you're still a man under a measure. You still breathe oxygen. You're still a human being who eats food and digests You carry a reproductive system. You carry a digestive system. You carry all these systems. Do you understand what I'm saying? And some people don't even carry the wisdom to know what they ought to share in lieu of what is important for people to know versus the place where certain people want to exalt themselves beyond measure because of the revelation. That Christ has given you. And man, believe me, when you get to the zone of understanding the spirit of revelation as he is in person, you'll be amazed at things he'll show you. If you are not mature, that stuff will exalt you beyond measure. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because idolatry is not what people do to you. Idolatry is what you do to your heart. It's how you respond to what they do to you. Who has understood what I just said? No people fall down and worship you. But are you going to receive that worship? And tell him, yeah, 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 lick my shoe too. Come on. You, you understand? No. But they will because you are anointed. Somebody say, I'm anointed. Say again, I'm anointed. Hallelujah. So, in many of these experiences, for me, the most powerful experience was how he taught my spirit to ponder. Right? You, many of you read the Bible and you say, oh, there's many scriptures in the, and there are many parts in the Bible where he says, seller, or think about it, or ponder about it. When God tells you ponder, he's not telling you, first sit down in your human imagination and understand and think through every nitty gritty of everything I'm sharing with you. That is you understanding spiritual issues 
in a carnal understanding. No, we compare spiritual things with spiritual things. So that place of pondering, of seller, of thinking through a matter is a place where God tells you, yield your spirit enough to carry the, the spiritual experience of what I am talking about. The reality beyond the physical world of what I'm talking about. Did you understand what I'm saying? When Jude was reading the story of Moses. Jude, he was reading the story of Moses. And while he's reading the story of Moses, the Bible tells us he's up on the mountain. Moses is up on the mountain. And then as he's on the mountain, God is dealing with him. He has refused him to cross the, uh, the, 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 the promise to the promised land because of his uh, yielding to the instruct to, 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 the, to the complaints and murmurings of the people and to God he had not trusted the Lord would not let him he goes out was it Mount Nabal the Bible tells us he's there and the Bible says and he was not and God buried him no man buried and found his body are you following me no man found Moses's body according to the story in the Old Testament dispensation are you hearing me Jude when Jude read this scripture he did not understand it from the first of value of what was spoken. No. He entered the marvel of pondering. And in pondering he yielded his spirit to the experience of God. Giving him a present vision of what exactly transpired. So we understand by Jude. That when he, his eyes are pondering. He's, he's meditating. He's thinking on the matter. God reveals to him that actually what people call I buried him. There was a few events that happened in there that are not written in the Old Testament the Summer Dispensation. And now Jude represents them in Jude 1.9. He says, the archangel contended with the devil and he had a dispute with the body of Moses. You understand what I'm saying? And to prevent that accusation, the archangel Michael tells him, may the Lord rebuke you. You understand? And the Lord rebuked Satan for fighting for Moses' body. That event was not written in the Old Testament. If Jude was in this dispensation, they would not believe him. Why? They only believe him now because they were told it is written. But what is written ought to be hard more than what you read. Who has understood what I just said? What ought to be hard more than what you read. And that is why there is a voice behind every word the Lord writes for you. He says, let him who has ears hear what the Spirit is saying. In other words, every time you're reading the word, God wants you to ponder there. And he wants you to go inside there. He wants you to, to, to allow you the experience to see way more than he could write. That's what makes him a mystery. That's what makes Christ a mystery. That's the beauty of him, the mystery. Even if we try to speak, he is unfathomable. He, he's endless. He's bottomless. When you think you know, you get to know more. When you think you think you know, you get to know more. When you think that you think that you think you know, you meet another man who knows more. Because sometimes in, in the surfaces with which we're exposed, we forget the yielding that pacifies to offense. Which offense? The offense that exalts us and kills the spirit in us that is so humble enough to seek out knowledge and judgment deeper than what we think we know. Because many of us compare ourselves. Listen, God has not... You are not called to compare yourself with any man of God. No, you are not compared to make yourself... To compare yourself with anybody... You understand? Although some people use that statement to refuse to learn. They refuse to learn. Simply they just refuse to learn. Why? Because they, they, no, no, I, I don't compare. No, 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 no. We're not talking about that. See, if you see some good, take it on. Praise God. It's the body of Christ. I learn from men of God. I do. I honor men of God. But my primary responsibility is to yield to his purpose concerning my life. And enjoy my ride all the way to the end. And reach this guy and then he hugs me and tells me, Apostle Grace, well done, good and faithful servant. Why? Because I revealed him, not me, him. Crucified. You understand what I'm saying? So sometimes, 
until you understand how the spirit of revelation works, that he works under that pattern that I just explained, you will never fully apprehend how deep everything in the scripture is. The word of God is deep. Tell somebody the word of God is deep. It's deep. That is why no man who reads the word can, you understand, can involve himself. The Bible speaks of he that is under warfare, the man who is of war. He cannot indulge himself in in daily affairs, in, in usual matters. Oh, who killed the other one? Who did this? Who stole what? Did they? You understand? No. No. Why? Because there is a lot to explore in the word of God. You cannot be gossip, gossiping. You cannot be found slandering. You cannot be found under cheap talk. Why? Because there is a lot, a lot here. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, no man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who has chosen him to be a child. Yeah. Chosen. Called chosen. Called chosen. The difference between the called and the chosen. The chosen has a distinction. They have a part. Or they have a part and lot in the matter. Do you understand what I'm saying? They have a part. When your part is defined, no matter how small it is. Because God doesn't reward offices. He doesn't reward people because they carry numbers. No, he rewards faithfulness. Tell your neighbor, God rewards faithfulness. Yes. There's probably an usher somewhere that has a bigger reward than a man who stands on, on an altar somewhere. Why? Because that usher is faithful. You understand? He's faithful in what God has given them. Somebody shout hallelujah. But the beauty of knowing that there is more to ponder in the word of God and that place of pondering is for God to take you to carry the experience reality when i understood that i stopped imagining things i learned to yield my spirit to the reality of the word and i was amazed what i found that i would read the word and as i'm reading it things start playing like i'm seeing them and i don't know how to tell it to another man because certain people might misuse that ability that that statement right there and start imagining vain things and think that it is God revealing to them. And then we start bringing heresy and funny teaching in the body of Jesus Christ. That's why we want to interpret scripture upon scripture. Precept upon precept. We want to reconcile everything because everything is reconciled in the person of Jesus. It cannot go outside Jesus. Otherwise, now we have to say, oh no, last, week, last night the Lord showed me a vision of this, this. And, and, and some give realities of things that have not existed. But also, there's a People who also limit themselves from these realities because they fear the extremes. No, we will deal with the extremes, but don't limit yourself in the freedom and liberty of revelation. Don't. Because God wants to reveal himself to you beyond what you read. He wants you to hear him, to explain to you what you read. Somebody shout hallelujah. The word is wonderful. Now, he says, he begins by telling you the beauty of the word. How it is a double-edged sword. It is quick, sharp, and powerful. It cuts asunder the soul and the spirit. Separates the joints and marrow. Designs the hearts of men. Nothing is hid from him. All things are manifest before him. Everything is manifested before the word. Nothing is naked. Nothing is a mystery to before the person of Christ. Why? Because he dwells in that light. Praise the Lord Jesus. The light that was created in the beginning. Let there be light. He dwells in that light. You get it? As an angel of light. I think we are dealing with a big challenge in this dispensation. To differentiate the lights. It's bigger than many of us think. It's bigger than many of us can assume. But God help us. God help the church. Somebody say, God help the church. Now, he says, seeing that we have these things, seeing, in a, he says, seeing that we have a great high priest, seeing then that we have a great high priest, he says, he has passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ, the, uh, the son of God. He says, he tells us, let us hold fast our profession, our krateo, our confession. I'm going to show you a wonderful principle 
in making the word of God work for you. Because you see, some of you say, oh no, I have the word of God, it's in my life, yes, but does it work for you? Does it produce for you? Does it bring results for you? Some of you heard of a story of a woman, she came, she had cancer, I think, and then they had operated her breast and nothing changed. Then they told her it has moved, she came into my office. I thank God for the way she wrote the testimony. She says, he made a very simple prayer. Why? Because some people expect it. Baga, 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 baga. <laughs> and I told her, come back soon to testify. And indeed, she came back cancer free. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm not talking about external aggression. I'm talking about a spiritual aggression. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about a spiritual aggression. That causes results. That when you are tired of something, you can speak to it. And it responds. Somebody shout hallelujah. That when you're done with something and your spirit is done with something. You know that when you speak, God hears you. And we shall have whatsoever we petition. Because we know that he heareth us. Somebody shout hallelujah. That place where you know that you know that I have answers every time I pray. That place that you know that the word of God will give me the results it has spoken. Because many people are giving up. Many people are giving up so quickly. And some are settling for a smaller life. Because they can't interpret a higher life in Christ. And because they can't understand higher life realities... Many of them have not only settled for little, but they've built doctrines and protective barriers around their insecurity and around their knowledge and understanding of their personal experiences, but not according to Christ. I've had people who say they don't believe in healing. Okay, let them die. Somebody was teaching one time, says, no, I don't believe in healing. Healing existed long ago. It's not for this year. It happened then. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. No, but it happened in the earlier church. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. No, 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 but, but, but it happened in the book of Acts only. And, and, and people are not supposed to be claiming healing. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. No, no, but no, no, no. The problem is not, the problem is unbelief. The problem is not that God cannot heal any disease. No. The problem is unbelief. Do you understand what I'm saying? And unbelief also has defined places. Because it's a place that everybody has a different place of unbelief. You understand what I'm saying? That's why he he asks Peter, from whence didst thou doubt? From where? From where did you doubt? There's a place. Which place particularly? Did you have an issue when you were working on water? Because sometimes when you have to deal with unbelief, you have to analyze exactly from where you began to believe or from where you lost the faith. From, when you understand from, many times you, you understand way more on how to deal with the, your, uh, your unbelief. Do you understand what I'm saying? And because of that, many people put boundaries around themselves and say, uh-uh, this, this should not work. No, no, this is... And, and, and because of that, we've made scripture speak what is, it's not speaking. To provide for our inability. I'll give you an example. There's this common scripture. Many, 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 we all know it. Where Jesus says for a prophet, he is no owner in his people. Among his people, among his family, in his own country. You, you remember, you read that scripture. They were offended in him, but Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Right? He says a prophet is without honor. He's without honor, right? Save in his own country, in his own house and stuff like that. Now, he's saying, when he says a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house, he's meaning to say, when, when a prophet sometimes goes outside people who are familiar with him, they tend to do different from people who are familiar with him. You understand what I'm saying? Like if my brother won't receive from me because he's simply my blood brother, okay? He, he tried to make a, make a point there. Or because you, 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 you think, oh, the, this guy is a Uganda and he can't teach better than the British man. Or if the British man, because the British man is, is this, like this, he can't teach deeper than this African man. You understand? It's like sometimes I look at the radio stations in Uganda. All the free programs they play, they play of foreign programs. 
They don't play free programs for Ugandans. I don't know whether because they are colonized to think that black men can't teach. Do you understand what I'm saying? No offense. Do you understand? But in Christ, we're not supposed to have Jew Gentile. We're not supposed to have that gnosis. We're not supposed to have slave and free, black and white. That is not supposed to be even in our mind. For it, if it is, then you're not yet born again. Born again. Do you know what it means to be born again? Born again gives you another nature in there. Hallelujah. Jesus. Praise God. And Jesus is neither Jew nor Gentile. He's not black and white. No, 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 no. Jesus is Jesus. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus is what? Jesus. Now, if you read that scripture, the, the Spirit of the Lord was telling me about, about it some time back. I, I was re- you see, the, be, uh, beyond that, the Bible says, he was marveled at their unbelief. Do you understand? He did not many works there because of their unbelief. He was, but the Bible tells us later that he was amazed. He was marveled. He, he, he could not believe that they don't have faith. Meaning that even though the prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own people, he still expected them to have faith. He still expected them to have He still expected. He still had an expectation from them to believe. In fact, when Jesus, when Jesus now tells us that he's amazed at their unbelief, it means he expected them to believe more. Do you understand? He, he expected them to believe more than they believe. You, you get my point? That does not necessarily mean that the prophet ought not to have results in his country. Who has understood what I just said? Because it's still a marvel that they don't believe. He, he was still, his issue was not because they knew him. His issue was still they refused to believe. For whatever reason it is, his, still, his issue is still they do not believe. Don't lose that. That his issue was, so some of you say, oh, because of that, therefore, I'm not going to have results in my country. I shouldn't have results. Hey, yeah, 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 it's okay if I don't. No. Because the underlying principle is, yes, it's true that some people have issues with their own. Yes. But it doesn't take away the fact that still the issue, the reason why they have unbelief made is because you're their own, but still the issue here was unbelief. Can we build faith? Prophet, can you still build faith? Who understands what I'm saying? Because we're getting to a point where we don't have excuse. We don't have excuse. You, you understand? We don't have excuse. And it's sad, yes, that he could not heal them. But that doesn't mean that we should create a doctrine around people not receiving. No. We should only show people why they don't receive, but to the extent of helping them understand certain dynamics in the, in the gospel. But we should not make it the doctrine to refuse people to receive or to teach what they ought to receive because we fear they will not believe. Our responsibility is to give them faith. Who has understood what I just said? If you didn't, don't worry. Your spirit has understood. Now, the word is sharp. The word is available. But it's not working for you. And Jesus said, no. Let me show you a principle that will cause the word of God to work. Again, it's in the word. He says, we have our great high priest who has ascended in the heavens. Jesus, the son of God. He tells us, let us hold fast our profession, our confession. If he said, let us let us, let us confess. Let us just make our confession. That's all right. But he said, let us hold fast our confession. Krateo. And the Greek word there for krateo is, he means with strength and vigor. With power and consistent, a consistent life. Of confession. He, he, he's not just talking about the place of you saying, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. No. He's speaking of the place where you, you, you put a certain power, a certain vigor, a certain enthusiasm, a certain, a certain rule over your spirit. To speak something continuously until it manifests. Who has understood what I just said? 
Don't just say two, three times. And then keep quiet. Don't just speak it two, four, five times. And then you hold a bit and then wait for it to work. And then you forget. And then you come back to it next month. And say, oh, sorry. I'm saying I'm healed. And then you get sick again. Then you hold it for two, three, four weeks. And then you come. No, no. Every morning you wake up and say, I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the right. That's what they call holding fast. Your profession. Your confession. Kateo. Your confession. You, you, you're holding fast. The Bible says he's the high priest of our profession. Hebrews 3.1. He's the high priest of our confession. That means he was the first thing we confessed right. Jesus was the first thing you confessed right. When you confessed him as your Lord and Savior. In heaven it was recorded as the first right confession you made. However since you were born. The first true confession. When you open, if you're not born again, you have not yet spoken anything. That is why even when he's touching the doctrines, he says they that are inexperienced in the word or unskilled in the word doctrine, the Bible says they are babes. They are unable to talk. Because when a baby is born, they don't speak yet. You understand? Your first confession of Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I take you as my high priest. That was the first experience. Give me the amplified of that. He says, mm-hmm. Consider Jesus the apostle and high priest whom we confessed as ours when we embraced the Christian faith. He is the first thing we confessed, right? Jesus. When you said, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Oh, something happened on your life. So he becomes the captain of our confession. Everything he has spoken through the word, everything he has written through the word, it becomes your standard. But to hold continuously. Don't give up when stuff is not working. You know, we have guys who say, oh, the, confess it, confess it, you'll get it. And, oh, I'm sick. Yeah, yeah, just confess right. And they say, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Then the pain comes, oh, uh, take me to hospital. Did you hear that? Then they put them in the ambulance. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Then they put them on the hospital bed. Doctor, am I going to die? <laughs> Praise God. And then after a few minutes, they say, oh, but then pe- the people come in. Some of you have learned how to positively speak when the right folk are around you. When some people appear like, oh, that guy, that guy. Uh, Apostle, I thank God for my health. I thank God for everything. Praise God. But when you go for breakfast and then the men of God and women of God are not there to provoke your spirit to truth. You find yourself sometimes, and this is an interesting thing. Sometimes it's not confessing negatively. Sometimes it's not that. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 21. The Bible says, having a high priest over the house of God, he says, listen, let us draw near with a pure heart in full assurance of faith. Full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. He says, let us, again, he says, hold fast our profession of our faith. He says, he says without wavering. Now let me explain what wavering is. If you read from the Hebrew, Wavering, Greek, sorry, wavering is not simply the inclination that takes you back to negative confession. Just to say, no, no, let me go back to negative confession. Wavering is when you give up to confess. Some people don't incline to negativity, but they stop speaking the way they were speaking. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes they don't, conf- they don't change confession, no. And and there's a trick there I want you to understand. Sometimes it's not that they change confession, no. But they get so fast spent with confessing and not seeing results that at one point they say, you know what, I have spoken this stuff forever. In their heart, they say, "Mm." they stop. They just get so spent. That is why if you read that very scripture, in the brackets it says, for he is faithful that promised. He's trying to say, I know at one point you might start confessing and stuff refuses to work. At one point you'll say I'm healed and the pain continues. At one point you'll say I'm rich and still the money gets scarce. You understand? But God says, listen, listen, even when stuff is not working, he is still faithful. I'm, 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 I, I want you to go beyond just confessing, right? To maintaining your confession. Even when stuff is not working. With the same, listen. 
with the same vigor and strength as you first began. That's krateo. With the same vigor and aggression in your spirit. You know, he says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence, violence take it for force. He's not talking about the physical violence. No, he's talking about the place where your spirit says, but nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. He says, nay. When Paul says nay, there must have been something trying to take him back to a thought he doesn't want to have. There was no nay by mistake. No, probably he was believing. And then some started pulling him back. And he says, ah, ah, praise God. And then it starts to pull him back a bit. I says, nay, that's not nay in all these things. He says, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's called spiritual warfare. Get to a point where the doctor gives you a report and says, uh-uh. And it increases, you also increase. Hallelujah. It becomes aggressive, you become aggressive too. Praise God. It toughens up, you toughen up. Hold fast. He says, if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence... To the end. He says we are partakers of Christ. If we hold fast the beginning of our confession, our profession, our confidence to the end. Some of you, in the end, you stop speaking. You get tired of speaking. You, you get weary of confessing. Why? Because you've spoken it for 10 years and it's not working. You've spoken it for 20 years and it's not working. You don't need to say negatively. You just need to stop speaking and you're in trouble already. Who has understood what I said? When you start speaking, are you hearing me? Until you see the results. Let me show you something. I want to finish. Let me show you something. Matthew 9, 21. Some of you read the story of a woman. You remember that woman who had a bleeding issue? Can you begin from above? I think verse 20. Let's begin from 20 maybe. There was a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood. 12 years. 12. And she came behind Jesus and touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible says, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. Jesus stand him about and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. Now I want to show you a mystery. Go back to the verse before. What she said within herself. Now I want you to read the amplified version of that. The amplified Bible says, she kept saying, she didn't just say it once and try to reach out. Ah, uh-uh. She kept saying, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I may but touch the hem of his I will be whole. If I may but touch the hem of keep saying it. Tell your neighbor, keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep confessing it. Even when it's not working, you keep saying. Even when things are just going away, you keep saying. Even when there's a lot to fight, you keep saying. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the head of Karabatol. John 8, 51, it says, if anybody keeps my saying, the Bible says, he shall not see death. Keep his saying. Hold fast the word. He told Timothy, fight the good fight. He told him, lay hold of eternal life. And he says, where unto thou art also called and has confessed or professed a good confession before many you kept speaking and speaking he says continue speaking because that's the true warfare 
Don't stop speaking because of circumstances. I know it didn't work. Maybe you have learned not to confess negatively. Take it a bit notch, a, a bit a notch higher. Take it up a notch up higher. I wish some of you are in my prayers when I'm praying. I wish you attend my prayer session. I sometimes I say, God, I thank you because I'm increasing. Oh, I'm increasing. Oh, I am so increasing. Ah, yeah, 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 I am increasing. Mara, ba, 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 I am increasing. Then something, something happens funny in there. And I see like it's, recon- it's not reconciling with my equation of prayer. And do you know what I do? I don't just keep quiet and then silent and then go into, you know, that somber mood and then get victim mentality. And then I sit in the back and start feeling sorry for me. And then I get somebody to hug me to tell me everything is going to be alright. I don't need it. Hallelujah. I wake up the next day. The harder it comes, the harder I shout. The harder it happens, the harder I shout. Until the devil gets to a point and says, you know what? This guy is so crazy. He ain't going to shut up today. He's not going to shut up tomorrow until he sees the manifestation of the word of God upon his life. I had fainted if I had not believed. We come from so far. We have been so far. Some of you would count your blessing one by one and know that this God has brought you from so far to leave you. There was a time all we have and had was confession. You know what I'm talking about. The money is not there, but you have a mouth. Success is not there, but you have a confession. Things are not working, but you have a tongue. And all you know what to do, you speak it, you pray it, you worship in it, you cry in it, you wake up in the morning, you weep in it again, you sing it. Hallelujah. They give you the worst news in the world and tell you you are gone. Dig up your grave, you're gone. Then you go in your room and yoke you yourself up. And instead of asking God, why, why? You just stand to him and smile and say, All for me. All for me. All for me. Things are turning around for me. And the devil sees you and he says, okay, you did not feel it. I'm going to send it heavier. And when he sends it, you take it higher. Oh, for me. You thought I was joking. Oh, for me. Oh, for me. Things are turning around. You have to get to a point where every time they see you, you are as vigorous and strong like they first met you. I know stuff is bigger. It might threaten you. You might go through years and years, 12 years with a bleeding issue. But keep saying. Say something. I've finished preaching. Just say something. Take three minutes. And repeat one word over. Come on. Say something. Just take two, three minutes. Just repeat a few words. All for me. Oh, all for me. Things are turning around for me. Are you seeing a change? There's somebody here with a marriage that is about to break there is a woman here your business you are given the worst report somebody went to the doctor and they told you your cancer has moved there's a minister who has believed God but you have quite not seen what you have believed yet open your mouth again say it this time Say it again like you first said it when you first believed it. Come on. Oh, for me, oh, for me. You remember that moment you shouted and said it was mine? Shout again like you shouted it then. 
get excited now like you were excited then when you first believed as you have received Jesus he says so walk ye in him come on speak come on things are turning around for me come on come on speak 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 let the devil hear you say it let him know that you have not given up let him know that you have not set aside let him know that you're not spent and you're ready to go all the way if he's ready to listen but you're gonna say it until it manifests on your life say it oh for me things are turning around for me come on speak it talk about your children Come on, speak upon your children. I'm a success. I'm a success. I'm going upward and upward only. Greater is he which is in me than he that is in the world. Divine health is mine. Success is mine. Increase is mine. Salvation is mine. Glory is mine. Wisdom is mine. Signs, miracles, and wonders. They are mine. Hey, things are turning around for me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 30 seconds. Only 30 seconds. Miracles are happening right now. Miracles are happening right now. Miracles are happening right now. Creative miracles are happening right now. Deaf ears are opening, blind eyes are seeing, cancers are living. Provision is come through. Salvation is come through. Reconciliation is come through. They are signing on your papers. They are working out an answer for you. Come on. Things are turning around. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 From today, say it with the same vigor and strength. Flew over it. That's what they mean to call. To, that's what they call a root spirit. You keep saying with the same strength and vigor like you began when you first believed. You don't give up. You don't get tired. Listen, the Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me. There are people on this ground, a few of you, you have something that wants to kill you and it is in your stomach. God told me it's going to come out. You're going to vomit it out now. You're going to cough it out. Cough it out in the name of Jesus. There are people, I saw a few of you, you have things, they're like poison. They're like, they're things spiritual. They're, 
they're, they're eating you up outside, but the, the origin is within your stomach. Let it come out in the name of Jesus right now. Let it come out in the name of Jesus. Vomit it out, cough it out, whatever it is, let it come out in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're sick of any kind of disease, I speak healing upon you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We're stretching forth. We are stretching forth. We are stretching forth. And you don't get it that I'm repeating it. We are stretching forth. We are stretching forth. We are stretching forth. I also want to speak a special anointing on some people. The anointing of increase and multiplication. I heard the Spirit tell me. I see the anointing of increase and multiplication. Holy Ghost! Not addition. The Lord is not going to add on you. He's going to multiply you. Take it! I see some in the back. Receive it! You're increasing. You're multiplying, said the Lord. You're increasing. You're multiplying, says Almighty God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.